Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Hitakiri Singh, and I'm going to have to be a little bit quick about this because I just finished a nice long video uh, that's going to include every Monster Hunter World Iceborne longsword build that you're going to want to know about. Um, this isn't going to be uh, a video for every single build uh, that's out there, uh, especially base game. Most people are going to rush through that with their defender set, uh, and part of the fun in learning the base game is to learn how to build builds. Uh, might I recommend a Nergigante and Valhazic and game base build if you want to try something fun uh, but you know a lot of your stuff like your Safi sets or your fun Valhazic recovery builds or uh, full on Altreon builds I'm not going to cover those because uh, you know once you get up to Master Rank 24 you face Sharish Valda you can pretty much build anything as long as you have some knowledge of the fight and some basic uh, skills that you're going to need for the fight uh, but once you get past Master Rank 24 there's going to be a lot of monsters tempered elders uh, farming of Decos Fatalis Altreon Furious of Zhang all these monsters require some specific still skills that you're going to need in these builds to uh, have an easier time with them. Um, so this is going to be every longsword build, Master Rank 24 and higher, that you're going to want to know. There's about 20 plus builds. Uh, most of them, some of them are variants, so it's not going to be too bad. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into that. But before I start, I just want to thank my squad mates, uh, Wanga Bunny, uh, Isani, uh, Teko, Zoe, Blackthorn, uh, Drago, Pain Senpai, all these guys have given me invaluable information on how to build builds for specific monsters, and I just wanted to thank them if I don't specifically thank them throughout the video, uh, but all these guys are wonderful in sources of information, and I greatly appreciate you giving me this knowledge and being able to pass it along to other people. Anyways, let's get right to it. All right, we're going to start off with the Master Rank 24 sets. There's three of them I want to show. Two of them are just variations of the other one, and one of them is very well known. Um, this one is not very well known, and I want to thank uh, Blackthorn for letting me know about it, basically. Um, you know, everybody knows about the Master's Touch Teostra set, but not many people do a set like this that's a bit more flexible. Uh, you're going to use the Frostfang Helm, you're going to use uh, two pieces of the Raging Brack, and you're generally going to use the chest and the waist for that. Um, but I'm going to also go ahead and use the Greaves uh, because of the skills that it comes with. It's going to come with two weakness exploit and three slots. It's going to come with, uh, this is going to come with three agitator and two additional slots, and all of these have at least one level four slot. And uh, another two agitator. Now, remember, your agitator charm is not going to be able to be leveled up uh, before Master Rake. 100 to be uh, you know five four or five so you can get high agitator from your charm so you're pretty much always going to use an attack charm which i believe goes up to level five before uh level 100 but at least level four i know and that's all you really need is attack four uh and you're going to use the acidic glavinous braces the beta because of the two stun resistance so this is going to be a, a very comfy set you're going to have the ability to slot a lot of different things in here um so what we have uh to show its comfiness is uh, we actually have our attack boost maxed out of this because we're using an attack four. Uh, if you don't have that or a combo attack jewel, you can add something like fortitude or uh, flying attack or so anything you want really. Uh, you do want this shaver. This expert four comes with the game and the rest of this is pretty much standard stuff you can get. I'll let you just take a look at it. But in essence, uh, you know, you want your max health boost. This is not a fatalis set, so you don't have that. So you want that health boost on pretty much any set that's not fatalis you got max agitator max crit eye uh, max attack boost stun res 3 and divine blessing 3 which is pretty much the highest you can get until you unlock the gold rathian set at master rank 100 or have a fatalis set that kind of stuff you can have one level of coalescence in here your clutch claw boost of course uh, and then for my mantles i just use my temporal and my glider for reasons i've explained many many times before you use your temporal to do your clutch claw wall bangs, you use your glider to get your mounts every time they're enraged, and you can create a cyclical battle plan that just lets you obliterate monsters. Put a couple of blasts in here for some damage to get that blast up and proc a little bit more, and since I have uh, Punishing Draw, I got a couple of KO maintenance jewels to help recharge my Temporal Mantle quicker and get some more stun, stun effect on my attacks. Uh, so this is a very, very good you know, instead of doing the Master's Touch uh, set, which can be very uh, spongy, very, very squishy, this gives you a bit more comfiness, stun resistance, and Divine Blessing 3, and plus uh, most of your 
meta offense so it's a very very good set uh, and just to let you know you can also substitute those greaves if you don't want to use three pieces of the raging brachidios uh, because you only get a skill at two i can understand why you might not want to use three uh, a very good alternative to that is uh, well, of course you could always use your garuga greaves but really it's the um where is it where is it where is it uh, the Furious Rejang, which is available at Master Rank 24, it's a very hard fight, so that's why I didn't put it in uh, this base uh, equipment for early Master Rank 24. But you get all three levels of health boost with this and two level uh, four jewel decoration slots, so it's very, very useful if you want to farm that and you can just replace the Raging Brachidius Greaves and just rework your jewels a little bit because you're not going to have those health. You can put your um, experts in somewhere else in the single slots and then use some of those other slots to get your tenderizer up. Uh, but anyways, that is the comfy set. Let's go on to the next one. And here is the other variation. Uh, I just made a set out of it, basically. Uh, we're going to use the Shara Braces and the uh, Grand God Pierce Feet. Let's go ahead and show these decos. Uh, it's a very similar build. Just allows you to do slightly different things. You can kind of... Uh, you know, I got my... Uh, stun res in here but it's slotted in so you can take that out and use something like i don't know miyazuma jewels if you're fighting a black veil uh i got a handicraft four in there so if you don't have that you can use a mixed handicraft jewel or you can uh you can just do some variable things with uh either the acidic uh glavinous gloves uh or the raging brachidius feet uh the helm and the chest and the waist is always going to be the same but you can mix and match this and pretty much create any kind of situation you want this one has maxed crit eye instead has the handicraft still has the divine blessing and the stun rats and your meta offense and your critical boost and weakness exploit and attack four minimum and all that good stuff uh and just to show the temporal you're just always going to use attack uh but your glider you can uh if you don't want to do ko maintenances you can do flight attacks to increase your damage on your flight by 30% or aerial hits uh, but it also uh, increases your mount modifier when you have the skill flight on so it's easier to mount monsters as well and when you have the glider mantle on you're going to clutch claw onto them press x to jump off which allows you to go immediately into your aerial attacks uh, so it increases the damage and the likelihood that you're going to mount it's a wonderful jewel in this situation uh, you can use anything here a jumping evade extender attack uh, attack four if you have it well attack four would be overkill yeah it would um evasion whatever uh but i like uh this in this one as a substitute crisis attack i generally use ko maintenances but crisis attack uh negates a lot of the stamina stamina depletion that happens during ice blight water blight things like that so it allows you to attack through those blights and not have to worry about unblighting yourself um it's also something you could stick up here uh you know these sets are have a little less sharpness but you do have a decent sharpness amount on your purple weapon but you're probably going to need to sharpen you know between every engagement when the monster flies off or things like that uh another set i have doesn't uh you know uh, has a, the four handicrafts so that is basically there so you don't have to sharpen as much but you know uh there's always a trade-off into everything but yeah that's about it for this set and this is my own personal variation to the same set at Master Rank 24 if you don't want to run Master's Touch. And I'm just going to gear this a little bit more offensively. So in case uh, you don't need the comfiness of the last set and you want to gear it a bit more towards offense. Uh, again, none of these weapons are going to have any augments. I'm assuming, you know, Master Rank 24, you can't get your augments until 100. So I'm trying to keep this as true to where you will be in the game as possible. Uh, I'm always going to have this Expert 4 in there because you're going to have that and i'm going to start including things like these challenger fours uh these handicraft fours are probably not should, should not be included but you can substitute those with any handicraft mix jewel to get you another skill too but i just want to show a more offensively optimized version of this set um, you can get your expert four uh your shaver and you want at least one challenger four because now we are going to be using um uh, these three pieces of the Raging Burkidio set and two pieces of the Frostfang, mainly to get that extra crit eye right there. See? And the crit eye on it. So you get three jewel slots 
and two jewel slots and both of those are level four as well so beautiful wonderful that's what we want this allows you to build a build like this uh, attack seven crit eye agitator max handicraft four because you don't have master's touch so you're going to lose a lot of sharpness on your purple sharpness weapon that doesn't have a whole lot for light break edge i mean it has a decent amount but uh you're going to want some handicraft but you can definitely manage with just two i just put four in there because i had some handicraft four decos uh but those are sealed face zone decos so you might not be able to get those but just have at least uh if you can two levels of handicraft and you can def definitely do those with some mixed decos uh health boost will be full of course crit uh, weakness exploit your meta offense uh, evade window threes in here uh, evade four is a rarity 11 jewel so that can be formed um, but you can also you know do handicraft evasion here handicraft evasion here if you don't have the handicraft and then here you can put something completely different that i don't even have on here maybe something that has peak performance or coalescence or whatever you want this build has a lot of ability to be flexible uh, and give you all your meta offense so you can you can rock and roll the way you want to you know you want to always Always have your crit boost, weakness exploit, health boost, uh, crit eye, and agitator maxed on these builds for for optimizing damage. So this allows you to do that and uh, just gears it a bit more offensively. Same thing, temporal glider. You can uh, exchange this glider for an evasion mantle if you want to go for higher damage, and uh, you can put a couple of KO jewels in that, uh, part breaker, whatever you want to help uh, assist when you have your evasion mantle on. Put some damage uh, more. Uh, you know dragon something like that anything or sorry blast or anything like that that might increase your attack and yeah i think that's about it i just don't like to use the acidic glavenous uh or the uh um, furious regain parts i just like to kind of build it like this and here we're gonna have a very optimized uh teostra's touch master's touch sorry uh raging burkidios build this is the one that you've seen plenty of videos about uh, why is it so good? Uh, Master's Touch allows you not to lose sharpness as long as uh, you're doing critical hits and you build your build in a way that once you weaken a, a monster's arms and heads and you're getting nothing but critical hits, you're never losing sharpness. So in previously when we had that handicraft, we can take that out. We still have our agitator secrets. Let's show you the build. So we still have, uh, it's optimal for, you know, not level um, 100. So, uh, you know, you still can farm attack four from Teostra and things like that. So that's why I included some of these like two expert four jewels and things like that. Uh, but basically you're only going to need crit I six because honestly you're going to have 35% base affinity, another 20% with uh, max agitator and another 50% once you weaken the monster part with weakness exploit. So you got a hundred five percent. So as long as you're hitting a weakened part that you keep tenderized, uh, you'll never lose sharpness. And that's the beauty of this things uh why is that important light break edge is a purple sharpness we weapon so it has a certain modifier of increased damage while it's in the purple state so you always want to keep in the purple state to get your maximum damage as you can uh this is going to be a deco heavy set uh but th this is what it looks like you still got your max health boost and critical and weakness uh attack boost five two levels of recovery up um because i you can use this past master rank 100 i did use this set to take out uh at velk the first time you know um, so once you have that regen, um, you can slot a couple of recovery up. You don't have to max it out. Uh, two should be good. I mean, if you're really struggling with a monster, you can put it up to three, but two's fine. Uh, the only thing I really wish I could do more is get all three levels at peak performance in this base set. Uh, you can if you don't run Shaver, but if you're running solo, especially Shaver, is just so invaluable to get those weaknesses going. Uh, you can basically tenderize a head, a leg, uh, the back leg, the tail, whatever. Uh, tenderize as much as you can before the first wall bang because all those tenderized parts take additional parts damage during the wall bang even if you don't like if you hit the head on the wall the tail will take additional part damage as long as it's been tenderized and now you have a giant critical spot on the monster which is the entire monster so everywhere you hit them is going to be a critical hit and you're never going to lose sharpness and you're going to get you know critical damage and all that good stuff a couple more attack boosts in your temporal here's that invasion i was talking about i maxed it out with flawless so i have peak um 
uh, maxed with my evasion mantle and another attack just to get some more damage. And that's about it. That's your standard Teos's touch. Uh, you can build this very differently. You can uh, have three levels of uh, divine blessing in here if you want. You won't have the stun resistance. Well, you could have the stun resistance if you want, but you can't have that and divine blessing and health boost three. You're gonna need health boost three, but you can slot out some of these things to make this a bit more comfy. I just wanted to show the optimal damage version of it. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. I'm All right. Uh, pretty much once you eclipse Master Rank 100, um, you're either going to be using some variant of the builds we just talked about. And, uh, you know, these, this guide is for longsword builds, but a lot of these equipment sets will work for many other builds, just tweaking the skills that you actually slot in. Um, but once you get to that point, you're generally going to have already farmed Fatalis because he's available at Master Rank 24, but it, I really wouldn't recommend fighting him that low. Um, but at Master Rank 100, some other quests become available, Gold Rathian, AT Velk, uh, Silver Rathalos, and other uh, sets become available. And there's a whole plethora of things that we can go through, uh, including uh, Altreon's armor and how you can build like a three-piece Safi set with that. That's really good. Uh, those are more case-specific and very specific type builds, but I just want to go over in general general what you're going to have basically you're going to have a set that's going to have either fatalis and some uh at velk parts or maybe a frostcraft set with four piece at velk and we'll go over all of that um now one of the biggest builds that most people build with their fatalis set is a maximum might set and this is my maximum might quality of life set and it basically, okay, so now you're going to have all your regens and uh, all your augments on your weapon available. Um, so you're going to slot in one affinity slot, one health regen, and one element up. Um, the other option for a single slot is defense up, but it's absolutely useless. Might as well do the element up to get the uh, attack boost from that. And uh, it's going to give you... This build right here, you're going to have a base 25% affinity with 40% uh, uh, from your maximum might plus 50% from your weakness exploit. You're going to be at about 115% affinity max. Uh, it's a little overkill. You can drop some of these experts if you want to add a slot a few other skills on there. You really can. You can go as low as uh, critical I5 and still get 100% affinity. But that's kind of the whole point of the maximum might build is you never want to do anything that's not a critical hit so once you tenderize a monster every hit's going to be critical um, very similar to the aspect you're getting with master's touch except you just you still lose sharpness uh, but it's just a way of getting high crit and high damage that way uh, this is a quality of life build it's going to have your stun resistance it's going to have all three levels of recovery up that's going to mesh with the regen in your weapon um, so you're just going to constantly be topping off your health which boom procs peak performance which is two things down uh, your crit boost weakness exploit that's always going to be maxed that's going to be maxed on every build ever you want 100 percent affinity you want agitator 7 and you want those boosts because that's how you get base damage to be as high as possible then whatever other stats you add to it is just building from there but those stats give you the biggest boost so you never not want to have those you know you always want to eat for attack boost large and i generally eat for slugger up uh when i have punishing draw and other monsters i'll discuss uh, what i generally eat for later uh quick sheet three um, it's not the most important thing for a longsword, but I would don't want I don't want to say it's useless. Uh, it might not affect your draw sheathing from your special sheath very much at all, but it is fairly useful when you're just sheathing your weapon manually over your shoulder. Uh, it does quicken up that animation a little bit faster, uh, which could really help in a panic roll situation, something like that. Two levels of handicraft, and then in my mantles, I got the Temporal of the Glider again. This time, I got two dragons, because my attacks are maxed, and I got the KO uh, maintenance. So, uh, just to help for the recharge, you can really play with those uh, like we discussed before, any way you wish. But that's the gist of this build, and then let me just show you something I feel is a bit more optimal... Here we go. This is more meta damage. And it's going to have... 
All right, let me just clip this in because I just did this whole segment on the Max Might meta build and I forgot to change the weapon to show the right stats. So notice a couple things. This has a base raw of 1224 and this one only has 1211, so you might think it's a downgrade, uh, but it's not going to be and we'll explain why. Uh, the main difference is, is maximum might quality of life does not have coalescence and we're going to show you what that does here in just a second. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is I'm not always going to specifically mention which decorations to use uh, because some of them are variable. You might not have uh, mighty maintenance, you might have mighty evasion, and you have critical maintenance instead. So some of these can be uh, mixed and matched. But once you start getting into Fatalis gear, uh, you always want to have to optimize. You want to make sure you farm two attack fours, uh, two expert fours, and one challenger four, and probably one handicraft four. Handicraft, the experts, and the attack are rarity 12 and uh, I'll link a, uh, a section in the comments for some of my other guides and I'll have a guide in there on how to, how to farm for those uh, but to optimize these sets you're gonna need those and then uh, you know the right combination decos as well but anyway anyways this is why it's so optimal um, here we have affinity is 15% plus the 40% you get from maximum might. That's 55 uh, plus the 50% uh, you get from uh, weakness exploit means again you always have your 100% critical you got your agitator max now instead of any recovery up we're gonna have tool specialists and this is why this is meta and not quality light quality blah, blah 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 I English speak good not quality of life uh, the recovery up is really useful because you get all this uh, additional health back with your regen but you still have your regen on your weapon we have attack my bad let me go ahead and talk about this we're changing um, the augments on our weapons to the attack boost and to the health regen and that's going to fill that up those slots right there so you just don't have the recovery up you're going to need to rely on your damage and your skill the attack boost is down which makes it you seem like you're doing less damage but you're not your tool specialist being five is key because now we're running Temporal Mantle and Evasion Mantle. Uh, Temporal is going to have two attacks, so your attack boost six on those. Evasion is going to have two attacks, so your attack boost six on those. However, once you proc the Evasion Mantle, which you do by Foresight Slashing anything, Dodge Rolling anything, any, any kind of evasive maneuver procs a huge damage boost. A huge damage boost. And that's why Tool Specialist is max, because you want to cycle through your mantles. Because even with a Temporal, you have higher DPS because you're going through attacks and, uh, you know, you can can helm splitter through attacks you can do your flint shots easily and make sure you get it and then have huge damage on the ground so you always have da higher damage per second with your temporal mantle and you're just using your tool specialist to make sure that the only time you don't have a mantle active the only time you don't have a mantle active is when you're switching out the mantles or looking for time to switch out the mantles it's it's pretty much like that uh, you know your stun res your maximum crit boost weakness exploit peak performance evade window two handicraft quick sheet there's only two too because uh, I, I did and for a quality of life it's might as well put it in there because certain skills you don't get in certain combinations uh, but for this skill what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, add this Phoenix deco now we have one level of coalescence and when that activates that's a plus 12 attack boost and that's plus 30 to your element or, or plus 5 to your status buildup but in the Zagas Bannon it's plus to the element but the plus 12 raw is the big thing once that procs uh, you're doing way more damage with that and the evasion mantle than you could ever do with the quality of life set It's 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 that noticeable once all these things are procced and you're using you know might pill or sorry uh, Demon powder or might seed things like that. You're getting much bigger numbers uh, With this setup than with the other one and that's pretty much it for the maximum might uh, now Let's go into what I feel are the best uh, setups to do for regular dragons and then we're gonna go and elder dragon excuse me and then we're gonna go specifically into each of the other dragons uh, the the end game bosses and talk about what sets we do there and here we have my ultimate god of destruction build this is the build it's my general meta build that I use to fight all elder dragons 
I'm actually going to use the Frostfang Helm, so you don't even have to farm AT Velk for this build. Uh, and I'm going to uh, have a Temporal and a Glider Mantle. And there are going to be some variations I want to show you that I have Attack 7 on this boost, but you can drop one Attack 1 and one Attack 4 and basically do a lot of different things like add maybe one level of Geology um, to go and do some... Um, you know farming in the guiding lands but we'll get there so this is the base build uh this build is a little bit more specific when it comes to decorations uh same thing with your weapon you're gonna have the affinity the health regen and the element up you're never really gonna not go with this affinity for any other build because you need it to get uh, 95 percent affinity as close as you can to 100 percent uh, and with the maximum might build you don't need that affinity, but with every other build you're gonna need it So that's gonna be your weapon augmentation set for every other build with the Zagas Panin. All right, and So you're gonna need three attack fours for this one and this is where your max attack is gonna come from uh, Everything else like we discussed before are can be some variations of these jewels, but basically we're gonna max up our recovery up uh, other than our meta stuff, our attack, agitator, crit eye, weakness, exploit, and crit boost, we're going to max our recovery up, our peak performance, our evade window to 3, which I pretty much consider max. We're going to do tool specialist 3. I'll tell you why we do 3 and not 5 here in just a second. We're going to have max coalescence. We basically want all our damage boosts. I want punishing draw. I like punishing draw. I like having stun effect to my weapon. I don't care about stun resist. I will go without it, you know. I don't really care about quick sheath. Uh, I could put Coalescence up there and have the Crisis Jewel, but I just like this build for my playstyle. I just trash any Elder Dragon I want to, and I have the ability to always take out one of these Attack 4s and put like a Hard Fire Resist, a Miyazuma Jewel, something like that, and make it a variation for any specific Elder Dragon. Uh, and all you can also drop one of these Recovery Ups if you wanted, oh, I don't know, more Maintenance or something like that. Uh, I just like the Recovery Up. It just makes me super tanky. I can I can survive anything now one of the reasons on builds like this guys that we never even consider uh, defense boost up is at the maximum if you have it all level 7 which is a complete waste but if you do the reason it's a waste is my base defense is already 1079 uh, you max out your defense boost you might get in the 1200s on that and that might sound like a big big difference because in base game two three hundred defense was a big 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 deal that was taking off damage from enemies attacks by 50 60 percent at this stage it's not that big of a deal uh, you might see an enemy is attack let's say the normal damage it does it might take like 10 to 15 percent less damage than it normally does but nothing that would have prevented you to behave any differently if you're gonna heal you were gonna heal anyways if you're not gonna try to heal and let your regen heal you back up you're still gonna do that anyways so it's not something that's ever uh, really really needed in any build after a certain level of iceborne you know what I mean um, you think it's giving you coziness, but it's not. The only build that it's doing something good on is a full-on Altreon build, uh, but it's it's not even great on, that great on that either. Uh, what what does do good things for you is Divine Blessing, Evade Window. Check out my video, How to Truly Build Defensive. It'll be linked in the guides below. And it'll tell you what defensive stats are really useful. I just have none of them in this set. None. Um, but anyways, I uh, got my Shaver, got my Phoenix, got my two Handicraft. And the reason I have my Tool Specialist S3 is because I have these KO Maintenance Tools in my Glider Mantle. Uh, as I explained in my Ultimate God of Destruction build video, this allows my Temporal Mantle to be ready one minute after my glider mantle is done and yes i don't have tool specialist 5 going and but i don't really care because i'm not running the evasion mantle this is just so i can flinch shot every time that he's unenraged and i can mount every time he is enraged and you do that cycle from normal engagement when they're not enraged to enragement to not uh enraged to enragement uh they're pretty much 
90% dead, if not already hobbling back or, or dead already, depending on if you're in a team or solo or whatever. This build is good for a team or solo. As a longsword main, you do want to be the one that tenderizes, so have that shaver in there. Uh, you have your punishing draw. I always eat for slugger and uh, um, attack boost large. So the slugger in the glider mantle actually makes a, a pretty nice difference. I get about 39 stun value per hit on uh, uh, hits that come out of a sheath, and you have a lot of them if you start to consider all the normal triangles, the normal R2s, the aerial attacks, the clutch claw attacks that you can do when you have your weapon sheath, they all count as sheath hits. Um, so it's very easy to get two stun knockouts on top of normal damage knockouts and leg topples and flint shots and mounts. So with this build, the monster is never standing. You're always in a position to get ready them to topple them over somehow, some way immediately immediately uh watch the video uh, it'll be linked in the guides as well if you want to see uh, a, a a description and a, a video of that so um now let's talk about the variations same build and you can really make this whatever you want uh so this is the same build but i'm just going to tweak it a little bit i take out the coalescence and I take out one of the attacks to put a geology. Uh, the reason I take out the coalescence is this is a build I want to go in the guiding lands with to collect parts. The geology skills let me uh, collect the, the monster parts that they drop twice. And the part breaker maxed out lets me constantly break parts and get those shiny drops. They're not the same as in base game or when you're fighting them in the Elder Recess or wherever. Uh, in the Guiding Lands, these things are special drops, and this is the very best way to farm as many as humanly possible. Uh, back in my mantles, I just add some of the damage I can back to it. Max it out from attack 6 to attack 7, add that dragon. KO maintenance, very similar build. Just tweaking it to use it for a different situation, as is this version of it. Uh, this is the Zenogre build, and same thing, I drop the... Uh, Peak before, or sorry, the coalescence for the parts breaker, but I keep the attack. Uh, basically, this is when I'm farming the Dragon Vein Cold Chucks, and I'm just trying to create as many part breaks and wall bangs and whatever I can to collect as many shinies. Uh, the Geo doesn't do anything in this, so I just drop it and add the attack. Uh, for a Black Veil Valhazic, I drop my attack. Um, actually, I thought I did something else, but let's see what I did. All right, so drop one attack four, get a Miyazuma four, and get the other Miyazuma right there. And oh, I have a, uh, I put attack jewel here, four here. Oh, okay, okay. So do I still have attack six? Okay. Uh, so yeah, it just makes it now I can use the same build and fight a Black Veil Valhazic and trash them because the only thing I really need to be careful of is what the Effluvia does to me. And if I got that mitigated, and uh, basically I dropped some attack and I dropped two levels of coalescence but if you're gonna run coalescence all you always really need is the first one because you get plus 12 plus 30 uh, plus 3 is uh, level 3 is nice to get plus 18 uh, but it's only a 3 increase in increments so if you get the plus 12 you're getting the bulk of it always nice so this is how I fight uh, a specific elder dragon Teostra might do blast resistance something like that so yeah it's a very wonderful useful set that is versatile for every single elder dragon and every other monster you can uh, you know even if you find like a Rathalos Raytheon you might not be able to stop everything like poison and fire but you can do a fire resist and bring antidotes with you you know you can fight any single monster in the game with this and uh, and absolutely trash them because just like I said you now have stun knockouts that you can do on top of every other way you can bring them down and if you do uh, with your weapon is sheathed if you do a normal triangle in the special sheath triangle all three of those hits have stun values of 39 when you're wearing your uh, glider mantle and you have eaten for slugger attack boost large uh, that's almost 120 um, stun damage in a four second span that's that's significant if you can land a few of those in their heads you're pretty much proccing them for a ko knockout Okay, I think that's all I really want to talk about about that set. Let me just see. Where, where do I go next? I kind of have this in reverse order. See, this is the... That, this is the Maximum Might. This is the Hiten Mitsurugi, Ultimate God of Destruction. And now we're going into Frostcraft. Okay, let me end this segment in case I mess up the next one and I can just keep it segmented. 
All right, and here we're going to have a Frostcraft set, and it's basically four pieces of AT Velk armor so you can get all the bonuses. And um, the waist is going to be your Dragon Barbs Alpha from Fatalis, just for the jewel slots, Challenger Charm, of course, and your Temporal and Evasion Mantles. The jewel slots are going to look a little bit like this. Same thing on your affinity, on your weapon, on your Zagaspanin. Um, and uh, basically, this is for a punishing draw playstyle. Um, so that sixth level of ice attack there is just already built into the armor. Might as well show everything that comes into the armor. You know, your max coalescence and your resuscitate, very handy. Uh, you know, your fatalis sets, you need four pieces of those to get the, their, all their buffs. So you're going to generally either have the AT Velk helm or feet for that. But when you put it all together, you get these pieces, look, three pieces of, uh, three parts of critical draw, three ice attack, uh, max recovery up, three more ice attack. Uh, this is just super handy because of the, the alpha allows you to have three crit eye and one weakness exploit. Uh, plus these two level three sh uh, jewels, one for shaver, one for handicraft. You basically are creating shaver, critical eye, and handicraft weakness exploit with this versus the beta. Uh, and it just makes it far more efficient. You wouldn't be able to get quite the combination that you really, really want when you want to have max crit eye, max weakness exploit, max crit boost, max peak, max koa. You need this set to get all of that stuff. You'll understand when you start building. And then the Greaves, max peak performance, and the two quick sheets. Uh, the jewel slots are as stated. And again, um, you know, you don't have your agitator level 7 on this one, but you don't need it because you're basically playing a punishing draw EI slash getting into special sheet style with this. And with the boost of that attack, evasion mantle procs, things like that, uh, you're just going to be doing big, big damage, big knockouts, things like that. I'm not too familiar with this playstyle. I, I do it somewhat, but not a whole lot. Uh, I, the main time that I use it, I'll talk about this build a little bit more in a little bit, in probably next actually, is uh, for the Agilaria's Edge version of this, because that is an ice weapon. So if you're going against Monkey, Furious Rajong, or um, uh, Alatreon when he's in fire active mode, this is a very, very good set. Uh, actually, you know what, let's just go ahead and talk about it since it is a Frostcraft set. And the next segment is Alatreon weapons. Uh, so Alatreon is going to be one of the you know top five monsters we talk about how to make a build for. And the reason this build is so good is purple sharpness, not white. And purple sharpness has a big big modifier for elemental aspects of weapons i don't even have any um very much attack in this it's just ice attack agitator five <coughs> excuse me health boost uh three which if you're very comfortable with this style you can drop that down to whatever you want right basically recovery up three you can drop that to two the crit eye is only three from the weapon uh from the uh, armor and that's all you really need because the weapon ha gives you another 15 and so you're gonna be at 30 base plus 20 from your agitator uh and plus uh or sorry yeah 20 from your agitator and um 50 from your weakness exploit and boom you have your 100 percent affinity with this build though you don't have um very much sharpness. Agilera's Edge has a very small amount of purple sharpness, so you're going to rely on a couple of skills. You're going to rely on uh, handicraft, oh, sorry, not handicraft, items pro longer, and you're going to have. Oh, this is the wrong build, sorry. Agilera's Edge. There we go. Okay, Ice Attack, Agitator, all these things are max. Handicraft is at 3. You're going to need that to keep your sharpness up. But Items Prolonger, 3. And where is it? Where is it? Protective Polish. There you go. Um, you're going to have two levels of bite, Blight Resistance, so you can easily shake off the Dragon Blight. Um, and uh, Evade Window is not too important to this fight. Quick Sheet's not important. Resuscitate just comes with the helmet that I have on there. Uh, clutch Claw Boost is important. Uh, but the big thing is the sharpening. You're going to sharpen in the beginning of the fight with your Sharpness Jewel. It's going to give you a coat on your weapon so you don't lose any sharpness for a certain amount of time. I believe it's, what, a minute and a half? Something like that. And Items Pro Longer maxed out at level 3 just lets this happen double the length of time. So it doubles the length of time that you will 
will not be taking any sharpness loss and that's really handy to fight so basically you're just going to have to sharpen one time either uh, during uh, the Eschaton Judgment or while he's in flight and that's all the sharpening you're ever going to need to do in that fight and the items prolonger also um, prolongs the effects of might pills might seeds and demon powder so when you're taking two of the three of those uh, all of those durations are going to last longer so this is a very very good set for damage um, when you're doing your ei slashes with this thing um, you're going to end up getting damage in the thousand range and it's just like uh, sadi once told me it's better to do one successful uh, ei slash than five normal hits you know what i mean so for a really skillful play against uh, speed running alatreon this is going to be the type of time you use a frostcraft build for a longsword uh, to accomplish these kind of things. You got your rock steady, some attacks here, evasions, and some attacks just to get some, some attacks in there. Uh, a viable substitute is also using a glider mantle and using two attack four jewels, so you have attack four in just that mantle. Uh, that could be something you use instead of the rock steady. I always use the rock steady because I'm not good at rolling the initial roar to get the wall bang, so this uh, allows me to get that wall bang uh, most of the time. Okay, um, let's go on into some other Alatreon builds, since we're already doing it. So, uh, with Alatreon, you're going to use your Kiar Sword Stream. This is one of the few times you're ever going to build an elemental build for a longsword. Uh, you're just normally going to do way more damage with a raw build. Uh, but when you're soloing or in a group where it's your responsibility to be the element, when you're fighting in a group of four, only two people need to be the right element. The rest, too, can be raw uh, for damage purposes. Um, so, when you want to be the elemental guy, you're going to build a build like this. Uh, there's two versions of it. One of them is basically basically augmented to more towards attack one of them's more towards element i'll explain that in a second uh but let's just do this is the standard one where you're gonna have pretty much get as much element as humanly possible and let's go over to the smithy i need to show you why uh this is the built the way it is with the augments so when you can augment your kr weapon for this alatreon fight Uh, you're going to have health regen and three levels of the element. You're not going to do the attack this time. You don't have to worry about the affinity for KR weapons because it has a high enough base affinity that once you build with your other skills, you're going to reach 100%. Now, the other one I have, KR Stream, is geared towards attack, and that's the next build we're going to talk about. It's basically the same build. It's just this weapon is geared towards the attack instead of the elemental. And then you have, with the KR weapons, and our good friend Zoe just figured this out after I don't know three characters and I don't know how many thousands of hours but the KR weapons have these extra customizable upgrades and there's seven levels of them and for each of them you can either do six additional 10 increase to your element and one increase to your attack or you can just straight up do all increases to your attack and that's basically the difference between these two builds right here uh, this one is just geared where everything is towards the elemental. This is everything towards the attack. Uh, the build is pretty much what we've been doing. Uh, everything, Fatalis, Alpha Waste, Rhyme Guard Greaves, Challenger Charm, Evasion, Rock Steady. These are your skills. Attack Boost is maxed. Agitator is 7. Ice Attack is maxed. Stun Reds, you know, everything that comes with the equipment. Your Critical Eye is only 3 is all you really need because, again, your affinity with everything that you've set so far is 35%. With Weakness Exploit, that's 85%. With Agitator, that's 105%. You got your 100% affinity. Same with this build right here. Only difference in this build, like I said, is the weapon. It's the same exact build when it comes to two levels of Blight Resistance. You want that because you're going to get your Dragon Affliction, uh, but it will wear off in like 10 seconds. And your coalescence will proc the two levels of coalescence and you want this with any elemental build because that coalescence is going to greatly increase uh your where is koa Uh, 60 uh, added to your element, 15 to your raw. It's just a big damage boost, so you want to make sure you have Blight Res 3. Uh, if you don't, if you want to play it safe and never get Dragon Blighted and take Blight Resistance 3, that's fine. Just completely eliminate your Coalescence because Coalescence is no longer going to proc. It only procs when you get afflicted by a status or uh, an element, so if you're not going to get afflicted by those, change that to anything else. Just don't use Handicraft. Uh, KR weapons are White Sharp 
sharpness only, they never go into purple, and they're the maximum white sharpness they can be. So you never need to add handicraft to any KR based weapon build. And basically, that's your ice, and your fire is the exact same thing. We're just using the fire KR sword. I don't have two of them yet. I am farming for one. So this one is built uh, for uh, the element like we were discussing before. Blight Res 2. And I actually only have one level of coalescence on this because you do get one less jewel slot on the KR uh, fire because the KR stream has one level of... Uh, one jewel slot with the key R fire does not, uh, but it does have a bit more affinity. So you're going to build this uh, rather nicely, rather similarly. It's just going to be fire, fire, attack instead. All the jewels are going to be fire. Let's just go ahead and show the jewels. There they go. <clears throat> Rocksteady Evasion. Uh, and this one in the rock study, I actually added the third resistor and a medicine. So what this allows me to do in the very beginning of the fight, I can go ahead and build up my charge, not worry about dragon blight, and get all three levels of recovery up instead of just two. But two is generally plenty as long as you're just not getting hit by everything. You know what I mean? Even if you get hit, you can get up to the monster, uh, bash him around a little bit, get your health back. You know, evasion mantle. I just put another evasion in there just to help make sure it procs. I add another medicine. You can do so many other things. Uh, you can do uh, whatever sharp. Angel, whatever part breaker or whatever but i just feel like that one is the best for my playstyle, you know uh and really that's about it that's the alatreon elemental builds and the very last alatreon build we're going to talk about is when you go raw uh like i just said um alatreon ice raw alatreon raw raw so this is a dragon based fatal Zagaspanon. It's your highest raw damage. The dragon element is there, but it's not the point of it. It's just you have the highest attack with this. And you're going to build it somewhat uh, similarly. Attack boost, so of course, no element. And uh, I do max recovery up on this one because I always want to keep peak performance proc'd. Coalescence is maxed out. I still have the two levels of blight resistance uh, because I want to get the blights. So I want to get the blights, so coalescence procs. I want to get the evasion mantle procs. The video I released a little while ago that has the 426 helm splitter is this build right here you know uh it's it's gonna do the best damage for me and uh let's just check out the jewels real quick and then we'll go on to the next monster uh, in my evasion mantle, I actually have a couple of Fuhrer jewels, so if I am burning, the ground is burning because I don't have a cooling jewel, it will proc a um, uh, resentment up to level 2, which is a plus 10 uh, attack bo boost. Uh, it's going to immediately, if you're standing in fire, your peak performance is going to be unprocked, so this immediately gives me some of that damage back in my evasion mantle. Rocksteady is just dragon dragon for a little bit more damage because they're just level one slots. And this this gear is built for damage. When you are the raw guy in an Alatreon fight, your job is to hit him in the head as much as humanly possible and do as much damage as possible. And this is the build that you're going to use to accomplish that. All right, let's go on to the next monster. All right, let's talk about Fatalis. Uh, these are the builds. I have three Fatalis builds depending on the situation. Uh, this one right here is your standard meta. This is what the speedrunners are going to run to get the best times uh, generally in a group. Uh, I'll discuss that in a second. Uh, this one is... Ooh, what is this? This is... Temporal and Rocksteady. Oh, this is when I'm the Binders and Ballista guy. I want to make sure it's a little bit comfier because I need to be able to hit my spots and be, you know, not have carded for uh, those events to make the fights happen faster. And this one is kind of a blend. It's not as... Um, squishy as the meta uh but it is still pretty squishy and it just allows me to um uh have a couple of levels of blight resistance so the main reason i have the two blight resistances so i one roll gets me away from being burning and i don't want to be burning that's the main thing with this setup right here uh with heat guard and fire resistance three you can actually eat for uh, moxie um so that's the best thing to eat for this setup but let's go ahead and start with the meta setup this is the one most people will probably be interested in. Uh, Fatal Zagaspanon. It's built the same way, of course. Affinity. Regen. Element. And 
those are the jewels and the main stats are crit eye max agitator max attack boost is only five tool specialist is at four uh tool specialist four and five there's very neg negligible difference between them uh so four uh five you see a lot of people do build into but four is all you really need stun res three all the rest of the skills that we've been talking about peak three quick sheet three might as well that's where the attack boost five comes from handicraft is two there is a one cooling jewel in there that's so the fire doesn't make you lose your peak performance one level of flinch free for the group that you're going to be fighting in that is something you can take out solo put in uh whatever else you want basically um clutch claw boost is definitely there for the softenings and your um Mantles are going to be temporal for the heavy artillery. Even if somebody else is going to be covering the ballista gun, you always want to have your temporal with heavy art just in case you need to cover that. Evasion mantle for damage. We've discussed that. And we're going to have two part breaker in there. We're going to have two destroyers in there because it's very, very key to break uh, Fatalis' head. And there is some ongoing discussion, but we are starting to notice that part breaker is increasing some damage uh, as well in certain weapons. So we're still testing that, but... Uh, it definitely does help uh, both part breaks for fatalis happen faster so this is one of the reasons it is considered meta uh, it's not true true meta because what is true true meta is getting rid of your two handicraft and doing uh, this instead latent power two levels of latent power um, that basically because they're just so good at hitting monster parts that they don't lose the sharpness from each stage is they're doing enough damage to get to the next stage to sharpen so they don't even need handicraft all right that's fatalis meta this is fatalis comfy well, not super comfy, not like Divine Blessing comfy, but just uh, this is a very similar setup, but I have a few things taken out. I have a little bit more attack, but I have my fire resistance. I have no peak performance or no coalescence in this. And I have uh, my heat guard. Uh, dragon attack is in a, in the build a little bit. Coalescence is in one level, but really I, I need to take that out. It, it really should be something more like uh, handicraft, handicraft right there. Handicraft evasion would be much better because coalescence isn't going to proc on that. So let's go ahead and change it. So we can give you, yeah, just a little extra handicraft. That's what we're going to do. Um, cooling, shaver, crit, attack, dragon. So, you know, basically with the fire resistance max and the cooling jewel, you don't have to worry about fire killing you if you have moxie moxie is a trap against fire based monsters you take moxie you can exceed your health and with the way moxie works if you take a damage that no would normally cart you uh, it doesn't and you kind of revive sort of like uh when the the palico revives you but if you're burning it'll insta kill you you don't get any health back you know so that's why it's a trap against any fire based monster but if you negate the trap by putting a cooling jewel and fire resist three now you can eat for moxie and this is allows me to have my heavy art here and my rock steady in case i don't get the roll on the beginning of phase three when you come out of the gates uh, i want to be able to bind him have him on the uh right place on the platform instantly and i want to have to worry about the roll messing that up if all my teammates are st standing on the platform i'm going to drop them at their face and they can instantly do helm splitters big damage tcs's uh zsds whatever the hell you want to go get him so this is when i have that roll left i'm taking binders i'm taking ballistas no worries all right and the third fatalis build is kind of the blend And uh, it's very similar to meta without a couple of the things. Uh, I just add two levels of blight resistance. I don't have the heat guard. I don't have uh, latent power or anything like that, you know. And I only have two quick sheet. In, cause that's basically heat guard and the quick sheet is where I'm getting and shuffling a few things around. Getting my blight res. Uh, the problem with the meta set for me is when I'm burning, it takes three rolls to get out of burning. And sometimes that can really mess me up. So this set is more damage than my responsibility set when I'm on the guns uh, but it's a slightly less damage than meta but it allows me one roll for me to stop burning and that uh, really helps me to get back to Fatalis back to his head back to doing damage on him where whether than uh, rather than worrying about rolling around and 
getting uh, you know stop burning basically temporal invasion again heavy art heavy art destroyer destroyer like I said it's just like the meta set with a few things dropped off to make it a little bit me uh, more comfy for me to, to fight now there are plenty of other sets you can do with this with divine five and things like that uh, I have some of that but you know we're not going over every build that's possible with these things you can always tweak the way you want to to make these fights more comfortable with you uh, for you but once you get to know the fight, you're going to want to end up doing sets similar to this. All right, next up is Furious Rejang. Um, just a couple of things you want to make sure you have slotted in for Furious Rejang that makes this fight much, much more bearable. All the equipment pretty much the same. Zagaspanon, Rhymeguard Greaves, Alpha Waste, Temporal Evasion. And you're going to build it more like this. What are the different skills? Okay, you got all your meta, meta offense, peak, evade three, quick sheet three. Quick sheet three is very important because you're going to do a lot of foresight slashes and a lot of uh, EI slashes against uh, Monkey. Um, but you want to have one tremor resistance. Uh, oh, well, flinch free as well because I'm fighting in a group. But you don't have to have that if you're fighting him solo. But that's just in a group. Uh, where's my tremor resistance? There it is. One tremor resistance because when he does those belly flops and a few other moves that create those uh, tremors on the ground, you get stunned by it. And if you don't have to worry about that, you can get so much more damage into a... Uh, basically, if you know the fight a little bit, you want to start it a certain way. It's in my last stream, the top five... Um, hardest monsters of ice board you want to wall bang them wall bang them shock trap them shock trap them that's the way you want to start the fight the first fight we get slaughtered but the second fight we get it right uh and you want to have a mind's eye ballistic jewel because once his arms are not sharpened any of your attacks are just going to deflect off of them uh even if you have purple sharpness so mind my eye lets you not have that happen basically you can still hit him uh even if uh his uh, arms aren't uh, softened, but you always want to go for those softened. So, uh, flinch free, footing, mind's eye, each one of those skills is going to make Monkey a much simpler fight. Uh, other than that, again, you can build your Divine Blessing, comfy way you want to build, but eventually, once you get to know the fight, you're going to want to build something sp similar to this, maybe a little less recovery up. But against Monkey, I like having my recovery up, especially when you do Mew, Mew is number one and you don't have the ability to go back to camp and such. Um, this is the build I like to use for that. All right, let's go on to the next one, which is going to be 18 MEL. This one's really easy. Uh, I just use my normal meta Elder Dragon set. Uh, this was a recommendation from Isani. He said just use your normal set and just add the waterproof mantle. Uh, because if you're doing the right damage at the right time, using the waterproof mantle, uh, so the water uh, that he lets out on the ground that stuns and messes up your attacks and stuff doesn't become much of an issue the fight actually goes pretty pretty quickly uh, it's the exact build I used in, in the same video the top five monsters uh, all your meta offense tool special it's basically my uh, Hiten Mitsurugi set exactly the same as that except I just have a waterproof mantle and for the decos in that mantle I just have two KO jewels instead of KO maintenance jewels that I had in the glider mantle. So that one's pretty easy. Just use your regular Elder Dragon set and make sure you have Waterproof Mantle. Again, if you need to do Divine Blessing, Water Resist, all that stuff, you can do that some with some of your attack decos. Re replace those with uh, things that would make it a bit more comfy for you. And the last one is going to be AT Velk. The last monster release, many consider this one the hardest one. And honestly, I have not made a super comfy or less comfy build of this uh, for super meta. This is generally how I fight AT Velk. I'm good, same equipment as we've discussed before Temporal and Glider again. Let's show the decos. Yep, yep. And so the only difference here is I'm going to have Divine 5. Uh, I'm not the best at always getting around the ice attacks. You want to make sure you have your Evade Window 3 for the Ice Beam. Your Koa 3 um, so you can get those damage boosts once you get afflicted by the Ice Blight. Uh, I did I, I have a crisis attack in here so it's ice blight so the main thing about ice blight is the reduction of stamina that it does to you so if you can negate that then you don't have to really worry about uh, ice resist three because you have divine five you know what I mean I would either do ice resist three 
um, and no crisis and no protection, uh, divine blessing, or do divine blessing in crisis. Uh, of course, ice resist three uh, would not allow you to proc um, your coalescence. So that's one of the reasons uh, that's not a factor. I want to be able to proc coalescence, but I don't want the ice blight to bother me. And that's the main difference in this set is now I have. Uh, a divine blessing and i have my uh airborne resuscitate like i can mention flinch free for the teamwork you can always take that out if you're not add whatever else you'd, you'd prefer and i got a little bit of extra evade extender in my mantle and that extra attack uh just to get some more damage evade extender is very helpful in this fight if you're having any problems with at velk uh get your evade window to three minimum but four or five would be godly when you combine it with evade uh, extender the jump three so two or three but if you have that max at three and evade window at five your rolls are now godly and um just check out my defensive video again it'll explain that more thoroughly but it'll tell you everything you need to know uh but it, it'll make you sure that all your rolls have super long distance and the entire distance of them have super extended iframes so it's going to be pretty much impossible for the monster to hit you when you're rolling through something unless it's an aoe attack like eschaton judgment or something like that uh and really that's about it guys that's about all the builds you're going to need to know and let me work on the outro Quick correction, if you have your KO maintenance tools in your glider mantle for maintenance 5, your temporal mantle will recharge by the time your glider mantle is done being used. Other than that, be good to each other. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and see ya!